How's it going everyone? Haven't made a video in a long time, just been busy. Um, I'm about to do some projects on my house, like the planning on doing the, the floors, replacing them with um, laminate wood, laminate looking, you know, they look like wood type panels. Um, it's going to be a pretty major project, um, so I've just been ordering materials and prepping for it, but and a, and a bunch of other projects as well. But I did uh, make some, I did make a couple changes to my networking closet here, so I wanted to show that. Um, as a reminder, this is my uh, web server. It's running FreeBSD. This is my FreeNAS server. Um, still running FreeNAS 9.10. But we'll eventually up upgrade. Just uh, want to test the, the new FreeNAS 11 before I upgrade. Um, so the major changes I've made is I've up. I this has 10 uh, storage drives, like two terabyte. It had two 10 two or terabyte Samsung storage drives, so they're fairly old. Um, those all got replaced over the last uh, maybe six months with four terabyte HGST server drives. Um, so now um, they were in a ten. There, there was ten drives in a um, RAID two array. So um, now there's ten four terabyte drives in a RAID two array. So I replaced each drive one at a time, and um, now the array is doubled in size. So the um, there's like 40 terabytes. It's like 32 terabytes usable. So this is a lot larger. Um, those drives are supposed to be more uh, reliable um, based on like the back backblaze reviews. But we'll see if that actually ends up being the truth. I've had one. I've I've bought a lot of them refurbished because they're pretty expensive normally. They they can go up to like 200 bucks. So I've been getting them like refurbished or used for a lot of them, and sometimes getting them for like just 100 bucks. Um, or less so some of them didn't work well I think out of the ten I have to so one of them I've, I've had to sh uh, sell one of them just saying like this isn't working and and I got a refund for it and then uh, another one I have still it doesn't seem to be working great like it's showing errors so I might still end up replacing that one um, so um, so even if it is a reliable drive, if you're buying refurbished ones like me just to save money, you're probably going to end up with a bunch of crappy ones. That's why it's good to have redundancy. I have two drive redundancy with RAID 2, so um, I was never really in danger of losing anything. Um, I was never that low. Um, so anyway, that's what I did here, was I replaced all the 2 terabyte Samsung drives with 4 terabyte HGST server drives. Um, if you look up the model, it's like HMS... 5C4040 are the ones, I'm, they're like the cool spin mega scale. If you search that, that's the name of the, like, the, it's kind of like the model branding. Anyway, um, so I did that to my freelance server, so this has, it wasn't really for the more space, it was just because eventually those two terabytes ones were going to be failing, um, and these ones are supposedly super reliable, so just went with them. Okay, so the other major change, which uh, actually does change how things run a little bit is um, let's see if you can see this so that used to be a two terabyte network card I mean not two terabyte a two port uh, gigabit network card and I had the same thing on the back of this one and I had two there and they was they were um, they were um, using round robin like uh, to get it up to two gigabit but it really benchmarked a little bit under two gigabit, and not even in both directions necessarily. I think it's just um, there's complications with the FreeBSD um, uh, round robin driver. So you weren't necessarily getting two gigabits per second across that link. Um, but now I used a, that's a 10 gigabit network card that I just showed. So let me show it one more time, and um, that is what's called an SFP module so normally what you do is you'd buy a little module to stick in here and then you would have like um, a, an optical cable and you would have buy the same module there but this is actually the cheaper and in my opinion better way to do it, it just doesn't um, go as far distance is instead this is just a copper cable so instead of converting that to optical this whole thing it just keeps it as electrical the entire time so that's a single cable that plugs SFP in both sides. The only problem with that is you need to um, know the relative length, and I think those can't go for super far distance. This one is like a three-foot cable, I believe. And actually, if I had these configured differently, 
um, the, that cable wouldn't reach. So it, I have a little bit of slack on that cable right now. So that one goes up to here. It's 10 gigabit. I bought both cards. Both, the one card I bought for like $40 on sale on eBay. The other card it's normally like 65 I think I bought it for $50. Um, just using a coupon. And then that cable was like 8 bucks. So you probably would pay 10 to $15 for that cable. So in total, it was about 100 uh, from this 10 gigabit setup. So now I have a 10 gigabit link bef between both of these. And I'm going to show benchmarking of it. Um, so that's what I wanted to show here. And once again, that's an SFP mod module. Um, usually with SFP, you, you buy a little adapter that goes in there and then you go to like an optical cable. But the cheaper route is to just get a cable with SFP modules built in on both sides. And it doesn't ever actually convert it to optical. It just keeps it um, keeps it as like an electrical signal. So here, I'll, I'll run iPerf so to just show the speed I'm getting over that link. So I'm running the server on my free NAS right now, and then I'll run the client. And I didn't tune this. I might be able to get more by tuning the like the block size um, or this TCP window size. I don't. I'm not exactly sure. But you can see I'm already right there. I'm getting 9.87 gigabits per second. So it's pretty much at its uh, maximum. So let's run the server on the other side to just test the other way. And you can't, usually you'll buy a two port card. You can see it's pretty much, oh, it's exactly the same, 2.86. Here it says 2.85. It always seems to be higher on the client for some reason, like by that one hundredth of a gigabit. But yeah, you can see it's nearly 10 gigabit per second. I also tune these links. Um, you always have to like play with it, but uh, I, I increased the jumbo frames. Um, I guess these ones have a jumbo frame size of 9710. So I just increase it, it'll say, oh, that, that's not an accepted value, and then I'll you know, keep testing lower values until I get to a point where it does ex it accepts it, but then if I go any higher, it won't. So the jumbo, jumbo frame size on these cards are 9710. Um, and these are the X520-DA1. So you can buy a two port card, um, and then I could have like had two things and load balance, but um, realizing that my storage um, those 10 hard drives aren't going to go faster than the 10 gigabit. I just figured I'll save the energy, get slightly cheaper cards, um, because I'm never going to be able to push that more than that through the link. Um, okay, now I'm going to test NFS. So this is NFS over that drive. I'm going to write a file, um, and we'll see how fast it actually can write the storage. Okay, I'm just gonna cancel because this is gonna write 100 gigs, but I don't need to write that much. So here you can see it wrote at, at 578 um, megabytes per second. So that's pretty fast. That's that's definitely higher than um, that's definitely higher than like you could get with 10 gigabits. So let's see, 578 megabytes. So times eight. So that is, that's 4.6 megabits per second. So my storage rate might be able to go faster than that, but probably not much more. Um, let's read that file. What's weird is reading over NFS always seems to be slower. And I think there's some type of quirk with ZFS and NFS combined where NFS reading seems to be slower, which you would think it, the storage is going to be able to read faster for sure than it can write. Because um, if I locally test this command on the FreeNAS server, I'm testing it from the um, the web server and it on a, on a directory, this mount files, which is actually uh, an NFS mount. Uh, and there you can see it read at 330. So what's weird is it's writing faster than it's reading. So I'm not sure why, I might, I might look into it further before, but it was actually doing this when I had just the two, the two gigabit link before. So with this 10 gigabit link, 
getting the same thing. So I bet you just uh, quirk with NFS and ZFS together. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you can get a pretty, pretty fast speed. So now my web server is dealing with the storage as if it's local. I mean, you usually won't get local storage as fast. It might be, latency might be slightly higher, but um, apparently these cards have good latency as well. So just wanted to show that, that 10 gigabit link. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video.